So, good day everyone. So, my name is Alan Alonso, a part of a PIP group to report to you about the digital security, ethics and privacy, threats, issues, and defenses. So, here are the contents. Digital security risk, cybercrime, internet and network attacks, malware, botnets, denials of service attacks, backdoors, spoofing, safeguard against internet and network attacks, and firewalls. So, about unauthorized, unauthorized access and use. Safeguard against unauthorized access and use, access controls, usernames and passwords, possess objects, biometric devices, two steps verification, digital forensics. So, software tap. Safeguard against software tap, information tap, safeguard against information tap, encryption, digital signatures and certificates, tech feature, 5 of 1, cloud data privacy. Hardware theft, vandalism, and backing up the ultimate safeguard. Tech feature, 5 of 2, disaster recovery. Wireless security. Tech feature, 5 of 3, mobile security. Ethics in society. Information accuracy. Intellectual rights. Intellectual property rights. Codes of conduct. Green computing. And information privacy. Electronic profiles. So, here are the objectives. So, define the term digital security risk and, uh, and briefly describe the types of cyber criminals. Describe the various types of internet and network attacks and explain ways to safeguard against these attacks. Discuss techniques to prevent unauthorized computer access and use, including access controls, usernames, passwords, possess objects, and biometric devices. Explain ways that software manufacturers protect against software privacy. Discuss how encryption, digital signatures, and digital certificate works. Identify safeguard against hardware theft, vandalism, and failure. Explain options available for backing up. Identify risk and safeguard associated with wireless communication. Recognize issues related to information accuracy, intellectual property rights codes of conduct, and green computing, and also to discuss issues surrounding information privacy, including profile co profiles cookies, phishing, spyware and adware, software, social engineering, privacy laws, employee monitoring, and content filtering. Good morning to each and everybody. Today, so I'm, my name is Alrich Del Heliera. Today, we will be talking about digital risk. Digital risks are hard to combat for targets or digital devices, and they may cause threat to your hardware or software devices that you are using. For example, digital risk targets your phones, computers, or laptops, and any other digital and any other digital device that you are may using, and it may cause threat to you. Now, let us go for cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is a practice of protecting critical systems and sensitive information from any other dig digital attacks. Cybersecurity measures uh, they are designed to combat against any other threats uh, against network system applications. So, cybersecurity allows you to protect your device and other critical information that that can others get from you. For the internet and network attacks, uh, these attacks contains malicious software um, that controls and alter the operation of the systems without the user's knowledge. So these kinds of attacks mostly contains from, or mostly we can get them from software that we download or install, which when we install this kind of attacks or software, um, it alters the usage of our own devices. So, now, we will be tackling about the different types of internet and network attacks. So, the first one that we will be tackling is malware. So, malware is in any software device, uh, so in, is any software designed to cause damage to any computer, server, or client. This harm was typically described as a software bug. So, 
um, in mal this malware uh, uh, we can get it from uh, installing installing software from internet or from any other websites that uh, we may not be trusted uh, another types of uh, these internet network attacks are botnets uh, so botnets can be used to perform distributed denial of service attacks uh, this, the botnets allows attacker to access their device and its connection and they can steal data from the user so botnets mostly focus on stealing data and which allows the attacker to access the intent the device the victim's device and their connection another type of this attack is dos or which is known as denial of service denial of service is an attack meant to shut down a machine or network making it an making it in a inaccessible to to extended users so usually the victims of this denial of service attacks were web servers of high profile organizations such as banks so the denial of service attacks shutdowns a intent the intent the victims intended machine so they so they cannot be access access um, their data and which allows the attacker to um, to to be only one to have access on their intended or their on their intended web servers so another one is the backdoor backdoor is a method of bypassing a normal author authentication or encryption it is usually used for securing remote access to a computer so backdoor is a kind of attack that, which the attacker bypasses the normal authentication or encryption uh, which makes or allows them to be the only one to control the remote access to a computer or a device. Another type of these attacks are, is spoofing. So spoofing is a situation in which person successfully identifies or falsifies any data to gain an illegitimate advantage so so the spoofing allows the attacker to falsify any data or identify any data that the intended victim were used so which in which they, they can gain an illegitimate advantage um, to enter uh, other websites or personal information or personal account that the user may have so how can we avoid uh, being the target for internet and network attacks um, here are some tips for safeguards against internet and network attacks number one um, start with a strong company wide computer use that is enforced and monitored um, so when you have a wide computer range from for you for your company or for any other users uh, it is uh, you must maintain it monitored and enforced to check or to check or to know if there is a any signs of internet and network attacks so number two is to install antivirus and malware and malware protections on all computer and servers. So by installing malware protection and antivirus software, uh, it allows you to have more security to your internet and network, and also it can make to the attackers to be hard to perform or execute their attack on your networks uh, number three is to have firewall uh, firewall and dos applications so by having the firewall and dos applications installed on your computer 
it may guarantee to you too that any type of internet and network attacks may not be easily uh, may not be easily to enter your networks and steals and gather data from your personal account um, another tip is to scan incoming emails for potential virus attachment so it is important to scan any other emails that you receive from other from another one so you get to know if this attachment may have a potential of viruses and, uh, like software virus or any other types of virus in which you can avoid if you regularly scan emails before you read it and last tip is to monitor your web traffic by monitoring your web traffic uh, you can locate or scan what type of email or information that you will gathering and also it allows you to protect your network to any incoming network and internet attacks firewall firewall is a network security that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic um, a firewall typically establishes barrier between a trusted and untrusted networks through the internet so by having firewalls uh, you can mo it can monitor any incoming or outgoing network traffic also firewall firewall allows you to allows you to establish a barrier between the trusted and untrusted networks which in which firewall separates the trusted networks that you are using to to untrusted networks that you may be once located or served from the internet uh, now we will go to the unauthorized access in use unauthorized access in use is when someone gains, gains access to a website or server using someone else's account without their permission. So the unauthorized access in using is which the attacker gains access to your, to a website or server using someone else's other account uh, without their permission. So for example, uh, I'm I'm trying to or I tried to gain access to a website or server but the permission that I the the account that I use is none of my um, none of my account and when I use the, the account uh, I use it without the permission of the owner so now how can we avoid this unauthorized access and use uh, here are some other tips to for safeguard against unauthorized access and use uh, number one install all security patches so by installing all security patches on your network or your computer it allows you to protect your account from any other types of attackers Number two is to pay attention to file sharing. Um, this second advice is mostly common to us. So, some people don't pay attention when they are sharing their files to other, to other person for they may trusted them or known them for a long time. So, it is good to pay attention. To file sharing from any other person so number three is to keep the firewall on so by keeping the firewall on uh, it monitors the outgoing and incoming 
network traffic uh, in which divides the trusted and the untrusted networks of the user. Number four is to carefully read email and know the senders. Uh, so when you receive an email, uh, carefully re re read the emails for any scan for it may have any potential software that allows to steal your personal information or personal account and you must also check regularly to know the senders of the email for when you experience the unauthorized access and use by knowing the sender of the email you may have a knowledge to whom which or who access your account without your permission mm -hmm. Number four, number four is to maintain a proper backup of your data online. So, usually some other users don't backup their data for they are trusted and know that no one other may try to steal and use their account without their personal or uh, without their permission. So, it is good to maintain a proper backup of your data in which, for example, yeah. someone access your account without your permission and deleted all your data when you do not back up this or you when you do not back up your data and when someone else erase it to your device uh, it can be hassle for sometimes there is information for too personal and and mostly uh, you mostly you trusted your network so you don't back up your files so by backing your data uh, it allows you to transfer your data to a certain type of device to another so uh, it, uh, we need to regularly maintain a proper backup of our data and lastly is to make use of strong passwords so by using strong passwords uh, attacker might be that the potential attacker may be may be may be having a hard time to access your personal account for you use a strong variety of passwords uh, uh, for example of this uh, strong password is mostly a combination of letters, numbers that you or the user is the only one who knows about this password. Uh, so now we will go to access controls. Access controls is the select is the selective restriction or access to a place or other resources that needs permission before you can use. So access control is the the selective restriction of access to any other place or resources so this access controls before you can use a certain website or server you need to indicate or you need to input the, the permission from the user or the one who made this access control before you can use uh, a certain type of platform so password uh, password is a string of characters used to verify identify of a user during the authentication process uh, so they are also designed to be known only by the user and allow them and allows them to gain access in a website or device so as I mentioned earlier, so passwords is contains of string that mostly to have a strong password you need to use a combination of different letters and numbers. So the, the password allows you to to be the one who can only gain access to a website or device for for this the for this certain website requires a password which you can use to access before you can use uh, or, be, or before you can enter to a certain device to a certain device or website and it is also impo important to 
uh, important that the password is the only one who knows it is only the user and no one other else or if anyone else knows your password they can use it to gain access to the website and gather all your personal data and information hmm, so possess objects possess objects is a term used to describe any item you must carry to gain access so examples of these possess objects are key cards smart cards and keys um, so these possess objects uh, usually they are uh, types of small card for example for example is the key card uh, which allows you to use to gain access for example some other companies usually use possess objects before you can enter the company so others um, others yeah you they are using key card or i or id that will or id with the ver verification of the employer or the user so we will now go into biometric devices biometric device is a security identification um, devices these devices use automated method to identify to identify to identify a person such as their fingerprints facial images iris and voice recognitions so this biometric device this it allows the um, or it uh, it allows the user to to register their fingerprints and facial images iris or voice recognition for another level of security um, usually this biometric device um, you can see it from you can see it from a company or any other types of big businesses that have a large amount of employer or worker so for for us the two for two-way authentication the two-way authentication is a method which the user can only access to it and only after giving or presenting two or more evidences so this so this two-way authentication before you can access a certain website or device the user needs or requires to present uh, any other two evidence two or more evidences that they provide when they are registering for a website uh, for example um, when i register to a website uh, i present a two a two valid ids that i have the name so the next time that I may log in into a certain website. Uh, I need to verify or send the evidences that I use before I, before I can access to the website. And lastly is the digital forensics. Digital forensics is a branch of forensic science that focuses on acquiring and identifying electronic evidence of all criminal activities. So digital forensics focuses into acquiring data, identifying ev electronic evidence that the attacker may use to all other types of criminal activities. So that is all about my presentation and we will now to go to the next reporter who, whom will present the other topics. So software tip. Um, software tip means that the unauthorized or illegal copying, sharing, or usage of copyright protected software programs, software theft may be carried out by individuals, group, or an, in some cases, organization who then distribute the unauthorized software copies of users. So, dito po is, yung software theft po is most likely ang copy stealing sa, ng property. Yung gumagamit ka po ng isang software design na gawa ng isang tao, nang wala pong paalam. Ayun lang po yung pinaka-basic na ano po sa kanya. 
Use physical access, contro controls to your hardware such as locked doors and windows, use cables to lock your equipment to a table, desk, or floor. So, ito po yung parang note. Never leave a notebook, computer, or mobile devices unattended in a public place. Use password, possess objects, and biometrics as a methods of security. So, dito po sa sinasabi dito is, dito nagagawa pong mahack yung device mo using cables na pwedeng i-connect din sa gamit mong device para makuha yung mga yung personal information mo. Then, pwedeng magamit to sa para manakawan ka nga. Kaya, it's better to use some device security like passwords or biometrics which is considering yung fingerprint po sa mga cellphones or face scanner or etc. So, para mas maging safe yung ano yung mga yung information mo o kung ano man yung meron ka sa, sa device mo na na pwedeng ipakalat sa ibang tao na ikasisira mo. So dito po na po tayo sa information tab. Information tab. Data tab Data theft is the act of stealing information stored on computer servers or other devices from an unknowing victim. With the intent to compromise privacy or obtain confidential information, data theft is a growing problem for individual computer users as well as a large corporation or organization. So, dito po sa data theft, eh, ito po yung pagnanako ng mga, ito nga po yung sa may data na sinasabi rin po sa kanina na pwedeng, pa, ab, ano rin po to, ito yung karaniwang nagiging ano po natin eh, nagiging main problem natin. Yung parang halimbawa po is gumagawa tayo ng ano, kalaswan po sa sarili natin. Nagibigyo tayo din dito po is madalas pag kananakaw yung data mo is pwede na tong ipakalat kasi kasi sira na ng buhay mo so, putting all your important important documents in a safe can protect your information from getting into the wrong hands keep your social security card password birth certificate extra checks copies of your health insurance cards and printed page of your important password in a safe so just like what I mentioned earlier Uh, ano po is better to have your password kasi ito yung parang isa sa pinaka makakatulong sa'yo parang sa paglabas mo po ng bahay ba diba, hindi ka po alis na bahay nang nakabukas yung pintuan mo lang so is better to lock your door para mas safe po yung ano, kung ano man po yung mga may iwan mong gamit sa bahay na parang halimbawa po, para sa computer po na kung ano yung mga meron kang nasa loob ng computer so, encryption is a means of securing digital data using one or more mathematical techniques along with passwords or key used to describe the information the encryption process translates information using an algorithm that makes the original information unreadable so sa madaling salita yung encryption is sa cyber security kung saan po nakoconvert yung readable data na ini-encode mo sa format na ano po, sa format na encoded. So, in, in, ano, encoded format. Madalas ito nakikita po sa mga cellphone. May mga, yung mga data encryption, data encryption. The use of digital certificate to sign documents. So, technically speaking, the difference between a digital signature and digital certificate is that a certificate binds a digital signature to an entity, whereas the digital signature is to ensure that a data information remain from the point it was issued. So, dito is yung pag-i-issue ng document such as certificate. Meron kasing mga tinatawag na digital certificate which is naka-encode na yung mga nandun na yung lahat ng bagay. Pero, need pa rin siya ng digital signature kung saan po, eh, is need pa yung ano yung mismong tao para pumirma. I, nakakatulong to sa safety rin kasi ba diba, meron pong mga nakaka, meron pong mga ano din po na kinakapi na lang yung ano, parang kinakat na lang yung ano, yung signature tas ine-edit na lang din nilalagay po dun sa document tas piniprint out siya So, most likely nakikita to sa mga government like ano, government certification like ano po, yung sa NBI clearance. Okay. Cloud data protection is a practice of securing companies' data in a cloud environment wherever that data is located whether it's, it is a rest or in motion, and whether it is managed internally by the companies or internally by third party. Hi, I'm Tan Carl Adrian, and I'm here to report the topic of hardware theft, vandalism, and failure of backing up, the ultimate safeguards. Hardware theft is a pretty common occurrence in business or office spaces where security is not firmly put in place. 
Hardware theft is the act of stealing computer equipment. And an example of this is three suspects snubbed for stealing over 50,000 pesos worth of construction equipment and smartphones in San Juan. Recovered from the suspects were a Bosch electric grinder, Bosch and Makita electric drill, and a 70 meter stranded wire. There were also two stolen smartphones during the event. Theft on computer parts and mobile accessories such as monitors, smartphones, peripherals, or other system units and equipments are the most common hardware parts stolen from these places. Hardware vandalism, on the other hand, is the act of defacing or destroying computer equipment. Hardware vandalism takes many forms, from someone cutting a computer cable to individuals breaking into a business or school computer lab and aimlessly smashing computers. Hardware vandalism, unlike hardware theft, has another goal in mind. Instead of stealing the parts and keeping it safe from damage for future selling opportunities, hardware vandalism aims to do the most damage to the computer parts and peripherals. Safeguards against hardware theft and vandalism Physical access controls, such as locked doors and windows, usually are adequate enough to protect the equipment. Many businesses, schools, and some homeowners install extra alarm systems for additional security. Physical Access Control Systems, or PACS, are a type of physical security designed to restrict or allow access to a certain area or building. Often, PACS are installed in order to protect businesses and properties from vandalism, theft, and trespassing and are especially useful in facilities that require higher levels of security and protection. Unlike physical barriers like retaining walls, fences, or strategic landscaping, physical access controls control who, how, and when a person can gain entry. Most PACS require a user to have an identifying credentials to enter a facility or access data. Physical access control examples of credentials include FOBs and credit card entry systems, encrypted badges, mobile credentials, PIN codes, and passwords. Personal credentials tell the system who is trying to gain entry. This is most commonly seen in large public and private establishments such as large businesses and school buildings. School computer labs and other areas with a large number of semi-frequent users often attach additional physical security devices such as cable ties that lock the equipment to a desk, cabinet, or floor. Small locking devices also exist that require a key to access a hard disk or optical disk drive. While GPS has been quite successful as an outdoor, real-time locating solution, it fails to repeat this success indoors. A number of RTLS technologies has been used to solve indoor tracking problems. The ability to accurately track the location of assets and individuals indoors has many applications in healthcare, especially during desperate times like this COVID-19 pandemic. There are many various possible solutions and applications of RTLS in healthcare facilities and their potential benefits including capital expenditure reduction and workflow and patient throughput improvements. The key to a successful RTLS deployment lies in picking the right RTLS options and solutions for the applications or problems at Where this application technology match has not been carefully thought of any technology will be doomed to failure or to achieving less than optimal results. As such, bis some business use a real-time location system or RTLS to check and identify the location of high-risk or high-value items. One implementation of RTLS places RFID tags in items to be tracked. Some users attach a physical device such as a cable or to lock a mobile computer temporarily to a stationary object. Other mobile users install a mini security system in the notebook computer. Some devices have it already 
as a default option for extra security. Notebook computer security systems and tracking software also can track the location of a stolen notebook computer. It is also a good option since some notebook computers use hardware and hardware encoding passwords, possessed objects, and biometrics as methods of security. This type of security does not prevent theft, but it renders the computer useless if it is stolen. On the other hand, disaster recovery is an organization's method of regaining access and functionality to its IT infrastructure after events like a natural disaster, cyber attack, or even business disruptions related to the COVID-19 pandemic. A variety of disaster recovery plans can be part of a disaster recovery method. The objective of a disaster recovery plan is to ensure that you can respond to a disaster or other emergency that affects information systems and minimize the effect on the operation of the business. When you have prepared the information described in this topic collection, store your documents in a safe, accessible location of site. Wireless security is the prevention of unauthorized access or damage to computers using using wireless networks, which include Wi-Fi networks. The term may also refer to the protection of the wireless network itself from adversaries seeking to damage the integrity, security, or availability of the network. There are many examples of wireless security, with the most common ones being wired equivalent privacy, Wi-Fi protected access, Wi-Fi protected access 2, and Wi-Fi protected access 3. Ethics and Society <coughs> Computer ethics are a set of moral standards that governs the use of computers. It is society's views about the use of computers, both hardware and software. Privacy concerns, intellectual property rights, and effects on the, on the society are the common issues of computer ethics. Sa computer ethics po, dito po tinatakan yung mga common, ano, common problems na ina, ina ano, ng mga ng point of view ng society sa about sa computer. Bala sa hardware or software, kung secured ba yung privacy mo pag nag ano ka sa computer, pag in-input mo yung information mo sa computer. Ayan yung mga common issues. Accuracy is to be ensuring the information is correct and without any, any mistakes. The quality of information me measured by accuracy type. Timeless, completeness, relevance, and if it is easy to understood by the users. So, the accuracy is important for quality information. Sa accuracy naman po, dito po na may measure yung ano, kung tama ba yung information na, eh, or mali yung information na binigay mo. Yung quality po ng, ng, ano, ng accuracy, ng pagkatama niya. Kailangan timeless, saka complete, at relevant, at madali itong maintindihan na ng mga lumagami. Intellectual property rights and are legal rights that provide the creators protection for original works, inventions, or the appearance of products, artistic works, scientific developments, and so on. There are four types of intellectual property rights. Patents, trademarks, copyrights, and trade success. Ang um, um, patents po. Ang patents, ito yung mga ano ng government, ang mga properties ng government. Tapos ang trademarks naman po, ito po yung, yung parang brand nyo po. Uh, ang brand ng isang company yan. 
ayun yung nag-identify sa isang company trademark. Copyright naman ay eh, nung mga products mo or original works na gusto, gusto mong yung yung sa, sa iyo lang walang pwedeng gumaya yan. Trade secrets naman, ito yung sa mga ano. Ito po yung sa mga company na meron silang secret na ginagawa na unique lang para sa kanila. A code of conduct is the most common policy within an organization. This policy lays out the company's principles, standards, and the moral ethical ex- expectation that employees and third parties are held to as they interact with their organization. Ang code of conduct naman is yung pat, balang, magsamadaling salita parang rules ng isang company kung paano sila magbe-behave kung uh, ng, uh, yung mga employees nila or yung mga makakausap nila within the company. Green computing is the environmental responsible and eco-friendly use of computers and their resources. In broader terms, it is also defined as the study of this designing, engineering, manufacturing, using, and disposing of computer devices in a way that reduces their environmental impact. So, aware naman po tayo na pag gagawa tayo ng, ng product, ng computer na product, it requires po na ano, maraming, maraming ano, elements like plastic, ganyan, ganyan. So, syempre, pag nasira po yun, sayang naman yung mga gamit. And, so, natin ito tapon yun. So, maka-apekto maka- lang dun yung environment natin pag dinispose natin. So, ang ang green computing po, yun yung ginagawang ito. Ginagawang parang nire-recycle natin yung mga old and, ano, old and sira ng product. Information privacy. Information privacy or data privacy or data protection is the relationship between collection and dissemination of data, technology, the public expectation of privacy, and the legal and political issues surrounding them. So, ito rin yun, katulad din kanina, yung information privacy po, Ito yung... Tap, tap, tap. 